Roll for an awkwardness check. It's a critical hit! It... it's the M word? Hello and welcome to the M word, a millennial podcast by millennials. I'm Connor. And I am Kyle Avocados. Avocados. You are lying. You are jumping right into it. Avocados, Connor. We have a millennial podcast. This is the fourth episode, and not once, not once have we talked about avocados. I I have the least amount of information to 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 discuss about avocados. Connor, luckily for you, I have the most information about avocados that I okay. could learn oh, well, then, in the last I, hour. Then let me let me go ahead and give out the information that I know about avocados, and you can jump into all of yours. That makes perfect sense. Um, I have heard from a Facebook post uh, that said that avocado trees are in decline, and that they are going they were they're harder to harvest. And I don't much care for avocados, so I don't. I didn't care. See, and this is the the kind of fake news that um that hides the true stories like what you're talking about. Like that's that's just sad that like we're talking about Russia whenever nobody's talking about the decline of testicle trees, which yes, is a nickname for the trees that grow avocados because they do look like little testicles. I mean actually big testicles. What uh, testicles are people looking at and then going, "Hmm, they look like those. Those look just like avocados. Well, they're also called alligator, um, so, alligator fruit, alligator balls, alligator fruit, or something, um, because I it kind of it's like ribbed for her pleasure, and, <laughs> um, and so I guess maybe it looks like alligator testicles. I don't know. Here's here's the deal, right? This is why I'm loving I, everything that you're learning about avocados. <laughs> like, yes, clear. You've educated yourself on this subject so well. I have learned so much. Well, here's the deal. This is the only thing I want to talk about avocados, and all it's right. something we all already know. That in 2017, a a construction magnate in Australia said in an interview, he's 35 years old, so he is not he's not a millennial. He is Generation X or whatever, and he said that. When I was... Okay, hold on. I have to do an Australian accent, and this is going to be bad. When I was trying... Nope, that's not it. Um, <laughs> uh, when I was trying to cut the avocado... Yeah, when no, I you was trying go, um, to buy yeah. my first home, I Rise wasn't buying blinds. smashed avocado for $19 and full coffees at $4 each. We we at a point now where the expectations... <laughs> Oh, that was a little New Zealand. Expectations of younger people are very, very high. They want to eat out every day. They want to travel to Europe every year. I don't know where that voice was from. Oh but my it was, God, keep on going. Don't stop, no, please. That's the who quote. You want me to do a show in this ox? I don't know where it's from. <laughs> it's like older countries had sex with each other. So he said oh my God. people are buying smashed avocado for $19, which is, first of all, crazy. And then that's why we can't afford houses. And, of course, everybody picked up on it and saying, you know, millennials can't afford houses because they're buying avocado toast. But there's a lovely website called The Kitchen. Oh, sorry, I'm not pronouncing it properly. This is an audio forum, and I need to really express how this is spelled. The Kitchen, because there's no E in kitchen. It's The Kitchen. That must be difficult to say all day when you work there. They did some just quick math. And when you talk about buying a home in San Francisco and you spend $8 every week buying avocado toast, do you know how many years it would take you to to buy a house if you stopped buying avocado toast? Uh, four. 561 years. Oh, that's how, so if you stopped buying avocado toast, you, that would, it would still take you over 500 years. Now, San Francisco is not a cheap place, Connor. I know this. I don't want to hear your arguments about why that's a terrible example because not everybody lives in San Francisco. I know you were about to say that, Connor. That's my favorite way to argue is whenever I don't and the other person assumes that I have wh- whatever very intelligent uh, retort to that. To Honestly, that I, I think it just saves time. If you look at some place like Dallas, Texas... Uh, you know that's a a low uh, a low cost of living area. The median price house price is one hundred and sixty grand. 
And if you wanted to put a 20% down payment on the house, that's $32,000. So then if you quit buying avocado toast every week, guess how long it would take you to buy to put a down payment on that house? How long? It would still take you 78 years. So all I'm saying is with this accent that avocado isn't a root of the problem. It is it. It is it. It is it. You know? The most information that I learned from what you just said was any time in the future that you give me shit for my inability to give accents effectively and accurately, um, I now no longer have to care. Well, here's I mean, I shouldn't, I, sh- I shouldn't have cared to begin with. You shouldn't have cared. But, but now I have recorded evidence, video and audio, <laughs> now. Connor, I think you think I'm embarrassed about this voice. I think it might be the greatest thing I've ever created. This isn't about you. This is about <laughs> my now ability to not care about what you say. And it just, it's, it's freeing. I wish that that was the name of our podcast. This isn't about you. <laughs> this isn't about you. That's yes, the, that's I do the name like of, that a that's lot. That's the name of your autobiography. Welcome um, to the M Word, a millennial podcast by millennials. It's not about you. It's not about you. It's about us. Yeah, it's so about avocados. Me, not even us. So the reason why I brought up avocados is because I um I went I was in in Houston visiting family over over Easter and I went out uh, with some friends and I made some new friends while I was out with those friends. And Manny, who is my new best friend. I made some other friends after I met my first friends. And my old friends also came in to see my new friends. You know, there was, th- there was a lot of friends. I'm a very friend person. Um, but Manny, who's my new best friend, um, who I met last weekend, he, as soon as I explained the podcast, he said, so you just like talk about avocados a whole lot. And I was like, shit, we haven't talked about avocados once. So Manny, thank you so much for providing um, this this great insight into our show. And I, uh, I mean, you get nothing from do it. You, this is, do you, you even nothing. eat avocados, Kyle? Here's the deal, Connor. I don't at all. I don't <sighs> even like guacamole. So, so that's the problem. Is like, even though we are two hashtag millennials, we don't, we do not at all represent the millennial group as a whole. A yeah. because it's ridiculous to try and and uh, give traits to how many millennials are there? Uh, it's like seventy million. In the 70 US. mil yeah, there you 70 mil 70 million yeah i thought how many people are in the u.s like 300 million oh 300 okay, okay that's right point being we're two white straight dudes um we're not landowning so we couldn't vote in 1770 whatever the fuck that's my favorite year but our goal is to attempt to in, in to to capture the millennial vibe you know we got to capture it, and we can't let it slip. Yo, these palms are heavy. Knees weak. Uh, wait, shit. I messed it up No, already. you you were... Uh, if you hadn't stopped, knees weak, palms arms spaghetti. Sp- knees weak, arms are heavy. No, you messed me up Mom's again. Hold on. hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Mom's spaghetti. This is, I have trained my whole life to be able to record myself saying, lose yourselves beginning. Okay, hold on. You're the Olympian can who you just leave tripped me in? up at his first thing. Can can you can you leave me? In? No, we're moving on. The, I honestly, that's why I took a f- offense at this at this guy uh, talking about this because I've never eaten an avocado, not once, and I still don't own a house. And by his reckoning, I think I should have like four. You know, right? Well, you're yeah, yeah. That's that is true. I mean, hey, Connor, on, are very popular landowners. Connor, on an unrelated note, do you happen to know the beginning of any Eminem song? Uh oh, yeah, yeah. Hold on. <clears throat> Can you, can you? Okay, so we're out of time. Thank you so God. much, Connor. How's your week going? Damn it. It's fine. How's, it's fine. How's your week going? It, it's fine. On a, scale I, uh, of, on a scale of one to avocado, how is it, how's it going? On a scale of one to lose yourself, I had a one moment to capture it and I let it shot. slip, Kyle. You only I had let one it shot. slip. You idiot. Speaking of one shots, I did have an audition uh, this week, which was. My my first real big boy LA audition. Um, I did have one for a small YouTube um, web series a while back, but I don't count that one because it was it was a tiny tiny boy. But this one was a was a big big white whale, and uh, it was in in the big a big casting office in LA. I went down there, saw about thirty people. I thought that they're all going to look like me, yeah. but what I'm realizing is that what is part of my my niche out here i did put quotations as you can see in the microphone is being ethnically ambiguous um 
and and so whenever I went in, instead of seeing a bunch of people that looked like me, it was just a bunch of people of different ethnicities. So I was like, I'm probably not going to get it because I think I I look a little too white. Um, yeah, and here's your what skin happened. is kind of like non-committal. I know. It's just like, hey, are you gonna be an ethnicity or not? Like, make up your mind, dude. Yeah. That's if you were my... a little, if you were a little shorter, you would be Asian. If you were fatter, you'd be full-blooded American, redneck, um, and fit better into Texas stereotypes. Um, if you, you know, kept those glasses and had an accent, you'd be Harry Potter. So there's a lot of things you could be. It's very wide ranging. Okay, Actually, I really only named that? two things, which was white people and Asians. So maybe not that diverse, but uh, well, no, Harry, po- Harry Potter's definitely can be can be several things. I have gotten that several times. So thank you for uh, for reinforcing that little tiny bit of hope that's deep, deep in out of my heart. Deep in the heart of Kana is Harry Potter. That um, you're a wizard. That's that's your hope in your heart of hearts. All I want, Kyle. All I want is to be a wizard. I still, I still wake up every morning, and be like, maybe today's the day. Did I ever tell you that I started reading the first book before the first movie had come out and I was turning 11, like literally it was the summer before my 11th birthday when I started reading the first book and I thought that it explained everything because I'd always felt like something was different about me and I always had deja vu and I felt like I was definitely a wizard and that summer I was going to get my letter and that Jesus had given, no, not Jesus. We said we weren't going to talk about Jesus. Um, Allah, I thought Allah would, was giving me this book, um, to, to enforce my destiny. And, oh, Kyle, it didn't, and you, I had a, a you had a, you had a hashtag relatable moment. We did. Anyway, so I pop in and, uh, it's like your classic LA casting office, um, with a bunch of people that, that well, you look know, explain, similarly explain to that you. To, and, explain that to me. Who am I not? Yeah. Know what a classic sorry. I mean, I'm sorry. Let me, let me paint, is. let me paint you this word picture. Okay. So you pop into this massive hallway Okay. And normally in the in the offices I've been into in Houston, it literally is like a small little office. It's yeah. got a waiting area and you go in. This one, massive area, waiting area with 30 or 40 people just walking around with sides, which are pieces of scripts to memorize. People were like yelling instructions to different groups of people auditioning. There was literally a room one, two, three, four, all that kind of stuff. And like as if it was a uh, doctor's office, but or or the DMV or some shit. So you're saying and, it, like they they do casting notices during the week, and then on the weekends they like raise cattle in this place. That's what you're saying. That literally is what they're doing on the day that I walked in. They were they were raising. That's why they're called. Well, this one wasn't a cattle call. It was called, but oh, anyway, I didn't think about that. Oh, that's yeah, funny. I'm very funny. It is, it's I'm very, very sad as well. Yeah. So I go up and and I sign up. Uh, I get in a line and I pop in with five other people and they, uh, it, 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 it was just so intense. So they, they literally were just like, okay, here's what you're going to do. You're a, con- a, a concierge at a high sc- upscale hotel and you are going to be facing away. You're going to turn around. You're going to point at the wall, which is your diploma. And you're going to ad lib a line. Okay. And at first I show up 30 minutes early because I had no idea where things were happening, parking, all that shit. I just didn't know it was going to go yeah. go down. I pop in, I I sign my name on the thing saying that I'm there. I get the little sides telling me that I'm that, that's what I'm going to be doing and immediately they were like you 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 and they point at me and they're like get in line. I was like, "Oh shit, I thought I had like 30 minutes to figure out what was going to happen." I did not. I went inside. They were like, okay, um, go ahead and slay, which is where you just say your name, and sit on the stool, and you're going to do the deal face away, turn around, point at the diploma, ad lib line. What are you going to say? They point at me. I go, who's to say? Because I I just thought of a John Mulaney quote, and I thought that'd be really funny (laughs) just to say that. Wait, Um, you said during the audition, or this is before? This was right before we 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 were gonna shoot. Okay, so uh, your audition, audition was not you pointing at a diploma, going, "Who's to say?" I thought I I almost did, and then I decided that wasn't a that wasn't a good idea. I yeah, thought yeah. that'd be really funny. I but mean, I, yeah, it'd be very funny for our podcast, and I do appreciate you sacrificing your acting career for the sake of our podcast. I did. I mean, I did say that in the audition room. I didn't say it while recording, which is the important part. Anyway, so they actually go down the line and they're they're like, okay, do it. I turn around and I pointed out their diploma and I said something along the lines of, I'm a classy guy. And I smiled and I did some like pointing and shit. And then they went through the rest of the line and then I walked out. It was two minutes and I drove 40 minutes there and 40 minutes back uh down laurel canyon because that's that's the that's the canyon you drive down with all the fun traffic on the way home from work and that was it gross oh 
They forgot to. You forgot to tell them that you're sick. I am sick. Sorry. I, I tried <laughs> until you said something. I muted my mic so that people wouldn't hear me cough. Uh, yeah, you should have said that I'm muting my mic now. Why Hold would on they, one no? Second. That destroys the purpose of it. I am. No, sick. everybody does need to know that Kyle is a sick, sick boy. I'm so he sick. Has, so many fluids coming out of his nose, his throat, his eyes, his ears. Well, his ears have always been that way, but just in particular <laughs> now, they're green, more green than they normally are. Well, here's the deal, right? So trees... Here's the, 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 the deal. The trees are fucking everywhere, <laughs> and they're getting their sex juice all over my nose and into my body, and my nose is committing what my, some doctors might call nasal death. And as soon as the nose dies, it just goes into your chest for some reason. Also, I don't know if allergies go into the chest, but I'm coughing a lot now. So maybe I and I just have the flu. I don't know anymore. But there's just, I mean, there's so much pollen in the air that it's a, inside of me. I reckon right now I am about 80% pollen, just bi- biologically. 80% pollen. Definitely. The M word, a millennial podcast by millennials. Uh, who's to say? I'm 80% pollen. 50% of our cast or of our, our hosts are pollen. Speaking of uh, 50%, a, I think that'll probably be like 1% of our listeners are Austrian. Oh my gosh, no. And I just wanted to bring this up because I wanted to thank you for listening, Mr. or Mrs. Austrian, for taking the time to listen to our podcast. We deeply appreciate you. And we looked up some very interesting facts about Austria uh, to bring up on the podcast. Kyle, why don't you start? Yeah, no, absolutely. I would love to absolutely bring up some uh, some of the research that I've definitely done. Um, uh, first of all, I want to add my own thank you to to our Austrian listener. Um, not Australian, so you cannot be offended by the accent accent I did earlier. You cannot be offended. Absolutely cannot be offended. Um, first of all, hey, thanks so much for listening to uh, all of our all of our episodes. Um, I sincerely appreciate you doing that. Um, I would love to learn your name. So please like follow us on Twitter and send me a DM if you don't want to do it publicly, but I do want to know who you are. And as far as your culture, um, you know, I really, I, um, you know, uh, you know, uh, Edelweiss, right? You know, that song from, uh, Sound of Music. Very, very good. Edelweiss, Edelweiss. Let the record show that I didn't actually tell Kyle that we were going to be doing any research. So in case you were wondering why Kyle was babbling on like a buffoon, it's because he actually didn't know any information. I know, um, but I know so much about Sound of Music. Christopher Plummer, he was in it and he took over for the, you know, sex, for sex, the, uh, uh, you know, sex predator, uh, Miss Kevin Piggy. Spacey. Sorry, that's what not that Kevin like. Spacey was going to be in Sound of Music, but um, Christopher Plummer, who sang the song Edelweiss in Sound of Music and played Captain Von Trapp, he is now super old, and he took over for Sex Predator Kevin Spacey. Um, now, the title of this episode is going to be Sex Predator Kevin Spacey, even though this, oh, this is the extent God. that we're going to talk about it. That, but is, I, that is not <laughs> the best idea that we've had. Speaking of other Avocados listeners, I want to thank... Right. I want to thank all of the other listeners uh, that have tuned in. We got some, most of them from the United States. Uh, thanks for those United States listeners the, the, back in the States. We have a couple of Canadians. Yeah, when I was looking at, I was looking at those old download stats, and some of those downloads, they came in uh, freezing cold. So um, I knew they were Canadian just because they kept apologizing about how cold it was. But no, I, I, I have many friends in Canada, and, and um, many, actually like multiple of you, have have sent me messages talking about how much you enjoyed the show. Um, so thank you for doing that. I um I do appreciate it. My Albertans, my Albertans, uh, uh, calling out. This is our this is our time to shine. This is me, um, Wildcats in the house. Um, get your head in the game. You know, I love it so much. Speaking of Wildcats, I want to use this as an opportunity to move on to a new segment that we are going to try. Uh, Kyle's idea called. Tumblr Tales. Tumblr Tales came to me in a hot fever dream where... <laughs> <laughs> As most of my inspiration comes from. It did. So, um, no, I think Tumblr might be the... the uh, so, I feel like most millennials use Instagram and Snapchat. Like, that's their go-to social network. However, Tumblr, I think, really encompasses the spirit... Spirit? God, I can't talk. Spirit of... The millennial generation and it's mostly because it's just so delightfully weird and it embraces that identity and so i i think that 
this idea of, of just hunting through Tumblr and trying to find um, some wonderful stories gives us an opportunity, first of all, to highlight some of our fellow millennials who are working so hard to create little, little, little gems and also to highlight those, those that need to work a bit harder. And Connor, well, I, I think you, you might have found a mix of both. We Yes, that is exactly right. We found the purest gem and somehow also the most disgusting. <laughs> you know, that's life, you know? And I'm, I'm just going to, I'm, I'm, I'm going to jump right into it because I have never felt, I'm just going to read a little bit of it because I really, it's really important that you get the experience that I got whenever now, I read this. Now, all okay. of our listeners, including our Austrian listener, and again, I please want to know who you are. Uh, keep in mind that I don't, I have not seen the story that Connor has found. So I will be, I will be, I'm sitting right next to you. Hey, look over in that passenger seat of your car. Who's that next to you? It's me. Hi, I'm Kyle and I'm very sick. <laughs> I'm Kyle, tree boy. <laughs> I'm Kyle, tree boy. I'm a tree dusty boy. Um, and I am, I'm listening at this story with you right now. Connor, it spread, spread, spread that lovely story. Sp- spread it? S- spread it like sex, like tree sex pollen. The title is Twisted Tales, Steve okay, Rogers oh. X Mulan, Part 1. Just under that, it says... Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, because I, I'm a little confused. I, Twisted Tales is kind of vague. Steve Rogers X Mulan, is that like a battle or like a versus? I, I'm, I have a very strong feeling that it has to do with them uh being shipped. Ooh. But just wait. Right below this says Steve Rogers X Reader as a female soldier. Okay. There are a couple of warnings before we start. Oh, please give us those warnings. Violence, comma, mentions of violence. Okay. Which I can handle that. Are this is the scariest part of violence. Well, uh, you, hold on. What I do like is that it implies that obviously, if they say, "Hey, there's violence in here," that that includes mentions of violence. But so maybe we're taking for granted that first violence warning. Maybe what happens is, as you read this, you have you know a ring or a grudge scenario where something comes out of the computer screen and violence you. We we won't know till part two. Oh no! Okay, this is there's some suspense in the studio today, Connor. I'm loving so- it. So here's there's a little bit more in the intro, but I'm gonna I'm gonna dive into the actual deal. So here's the opening paragraph. <clears throat> I'm ready. My body is ready. Clench up, Kyle. Okay. You woke up and stretched, seeing a light forming outside your window. You got up and dressed, greeting your parents and grandfather downstairs before going for your morning run. Normally, <laughs> girls near your home hadn't been doing these kinds of activities, but your parents owned a plot of land further into the country. They all agreed you weren't really hurting anyone, and it was good to keep outdoors. And here we go. After getting back, you stretched and washed up before breakfast. You drove into town and started your work as an assistant, a fairly high job in your town since you weren't the only secretary. Oh, God. Your boss enjoyed your fresh t- intakes oh, on no. work at work at articles from the local newspaper he didn't give you the credit to most of your work and you knew he couldn't without backlash you were hoping that one day you could fix that but now you were content i'm going to stop oh no because i can't do it anymore is the tumblr user the chick who wrote 50 shades of gray because i haven't read it but i i do believe it mimics the same quality and almost the exact same setup i think my favorite my favorite part about the uh the beginning of of this is that it says you yeah um i don't know if you noticed that or not it does but, uh, yeah uh, i did notice which is an odd t- it's an odd voice to pick for a story but right um but it's supposed it's supposed to be you. You're you're uh you're supposed to be with Steve Rogers probably. Well, wait, hold on. I assumed we were some small town girl. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're a small town girl. Yeah. Okay, I swear to god they changed part of the script because whenever I read it last night no- or okay, it's 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 later in part 4 because it likes to do this thing because it it doesn't want to pick out like 
a job, it says you were being hired as a lookout slash sharpshooter. And they talk about being a lookout slash sharpshooter <laughs> the whole time. Hold on. Didn't the first part talk about working in a newspaper or something? The, I, I skipped over to part four. We jumped. Oh, my gosh. What is happening in this story? Don't worry, Steve smiled to you. I'll be close by. He winked and nudged you, and you nudged him back before hopping out of the car. I, I'm i going to delete my cache <laughs> and destroy my computer. Oh uh, yeah, is there some violence coming out towards you? I think I'm. Let's I do. think I'm. Squinting. I'm feeling that violence. I'm glad they. I mean, they gave me the warning, but I'm not. Right. I am not ready for that. I yeah. wasn't. I wasn't prepared. No matter. You couldn't give me any more warning than what to, you did. To be fair, they did warn us pretty pretty well, saying this is a twisted tale. Um, it just. It is a like, twisted tale. Yeah. It, Holy. It, it God, wasn't really the topic. The topic wasn't twisted. It was more the writing. And tense and voice was all sorts of twisted. Yeah. So, do you have a? Do you have any critiques for? Um, I actually did exit out, so I don't remember that person's name. But let's just call them. Uh, yeah, I would Jeremiah. rather Jeremiah. Yeah, I, I like Jeremiah. I would rather not use actual usernames because I don't. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to make fun of our fellow millennials. Um, I want to make fun of them anonymously, and I feel like that's <laughs> probably better for our, that's- our planet. Yeah, it's also way more indicative of our uh, of our of our generation. Yeah, I would rather not make fun of a human person. I will make fun of the idea of a human person, and I, I think that's it. an important distinction. Um, no, Jeremiah, I think you did. Um, you know, I th- I think the original premise was just so good, and I think that there was a, just so much potential. But first of all, you know, I've done a little writing, and I I, I read a lot. I don't know a lot of books that use the second person voice meaning you 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 most of them use first person and or third person and so that was an interesting choice and i don't you know i'm just gonna say it and i think i need to do it in a british accent because then it's like kind of cool if you're being yelled at and critiqued by a british person it's kind of cool right it's kind of sexy yeah go ahead and try your british australian new zealand canadian hybrid i can't do that that was a very special avocado voice and that's what it is called it says oh if sorry an yeah avocado, go ahead and pull on your avocado voice an avocado became a human and that's the voice it does no um i'm gonna do a british i'm gonna do just a british accent um that's kind of sexy but also kind of like um mean okay jeremiah no, no, hold on. That was too cut. No, that was that, like too no, 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 no. That was the cop. I loved it. You I loved it? it? Okay. No, yeah. Jeremiah, I think your heart was in the right place. But, 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 you bloody awful. You're just so damn terrible. It smelled like an ass crack of a shit house. sorry, shite house that I once lived in for four days with a wonderful woman named Mary. Mary, let me talk about Mary for a little bit. You know, I can't talk about Mary. It's too emotional. Um, anyway, Jeremiah, it was, it was absolute crap. I really didn't, I didn't feel involved in the characters' lives. Um, I didn't like that it was all on me. I didn't like that, you know, it was you. And, um, also I really want to explore the shop shooter thing more. I think that'd be more fun. I think I did three British accents there all in the course of a minute. So I think that's the record. I'm real happy about it. Thank you so much. I'll take my answer off the air. Can, uh, whenever you edit this, can it? Can you actually Can I just cut all of that out? Yep. No, 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 no. I was going to say cut it all out. Just cut out the consonants and just leave in the vowels. Only vowels? Uh, you, yeah. That was stellar. Yeah, that's good how, job. No, that's my football announcer voice. On a goal! I mean, I will tell you. I mean, I will give it a will. Speaking of talking in the, uh, the second person, I DM'd my first Dungeons & Dragons session last week oh my goodness gracious yeah yeah i've never Uh, i've never played dungeons and dragons Um, for those for those who don't know it's a role-playing game in which one person leads a group through a magical tale and the group says they if they want to try something and then i would go you do that or you don't do that like you fail or you do or you don't i had a fantastic time uh and also a very tiring time because we did it Four, maybe five hours. It was they, a lot. They seem to take a long time. The 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 DM sessions. Right. Um, well, well, we we shouldn't have done it that long because uh, after 
after about hour three, we were getting tapped out. And of course, I'm I'm not a I'm a giving DM. I'm a which is a dungeon master. I'm a giving dungeon master. I'm a I'm a very gracious one, I think. But the problem is, I'm also a very realistic one. So if you're like, I try to intimidate like some spectral beast looking thing, I'm like, you better figure that shit out. You better roll. You better and roll a, do- a twenty. If they don't roll a twenty. They're like done so. Unfortunately, this fucker did, oh. and so this spectral beast suddenly gave in and was like, "Oh, we're BFFs now," and it was it, it it didn't it didn't go according to plan. But isn't that kind of like obviously I've never played. I do I have listened and I do listen to the Adventure Zone, which is a uh it, well originally it was a a Dungeons and Dragons podcast between this this family of brothers and a, their dad. And I I did listen to that, so I understand some of the basic rules. Doesn't that kind of what makes doesn't it that make Dungeons and Dragons kind of entertaining? I know it might be frustrating for you oh, because you have sure. to plan for every variable. I mean, it absolutely makes it more fun in general. Yeah, for people, not you. I am not people, Kyle. No, I and, am, and and back to the no. title of our show. This isn't about you, and I mean that. I'm that mean that coming from this isn't your about, voice, but the. No, I thought it's not about you. It's not about you. No, yeah, it's not about me. Hi, I'm Connor. It's not about you. That's my um, my Connor voice. That is actually really exciting, though. I one day want to play Dungeons & Dragons, but I'm just afraid of where it'll take me because I'm afraid it's going to be like heroin, and once I get a taste, I'm not going to be able to stop, and then that's going to be my thing. Not to say that's a bad thing at all, but it does seem to take up a lot of no, significant time. I mean, you time. could, you could, you could, you could balance it out right i mean i i do it probably like once a week if that it does take some time in between because i have to prep for the people yeah no it doesn't take over my life now if i were given the option to play dungeons and dragons all day every day i and and, it, and i would also be able to afford my apartment then like yes let's do it <laughs> i'm down but not in most other circumstances not well, in most of them but see what i'm kind of afraid of is you have something that i don't have and it's something that I call sexual prowess. Uh, to to be <laughs> to be decided. I say to be decided. That's, that is, there is not a um, you know a definitive answer that we have seen yet. We have to speak with a judge. Which speaking the of which, sexual prowess the, judge, the sex judge. No, That's Satan. No, I was going to say impulse control, which is to say that when I like something, I just want to do it and go for it. And um, do it right then and all the time. And you tend to want to do so many things that you've learned how to balance that, you know, among, um, you know, various whatnots. And so that's kind of what I meant is that if I start it, I'm, that's going to be my thing for a foreseeable future. Mm. Yeah, I just I just struggle with that. But it does. I really like the part of it that concerns like character creation. I could never be a DM. Um, that's it's way too much effort. But I could be, I like creating a character, and I love exhibiting that character vis you sound my like, avocado voice. You sound like you would be a uh, the type of, because I was getting frustrated with some of the people. Like, one of them is, uh, I, I hope they don't, I hope they don't, uh, I hope they don't listen to this. But uh, <laughs> one of them is a rogue, and he always does shit that... It just fucks with everything else. Like he'll try to. He always wants to just steal shit and not tell the other characters. Okay. And that's. I mean, I'm sure that's fine. I'm just so used to like listening to uh, like the Adventure Zone, and uh, and their their kind of camaraderie and them like just trying to. Their goal is just to just to complete like the goal of the the entire thing. You yeah. know. Rather than. But they don't have a j- rogue character, which I'm not sure exactly what it is. But based on the word rogue. It does sound like that person may be exhibiting that the characteristics of a rogue. I don't know. Well, that either way, either way, it was like so. There was a point whenever they all went back to a uh, to an inn, and one of them was playing uh, a beautiful song, and everybody was paying attention to them. And he immediately went like, "I try to pick everybody's pockets," and I was like, "God, damn it! Fine, roll, pick, roll now." Pick, yeah, I did. He didn't. He didn't roll well. Uh. And so I was just like, yeah, you, you snuck some gold out of like some drunkie's pocket, but then uh, everybody else noticed and now people don't like you. Well, Connor, let's, speaking of pickpockets and, and, and pickpocketing, I want to talk about our problem this week. Yeah. Well, hey, I have, so we have a couple of different options that I, uh, was brought up to me by a listener. 
So I do want to I want to throw a couple of problems our way and want to I want to see what sticks. Connor, I had such a damn fine transition into our problem that we put on our show prep and now it's broken. Problem number 1. I okay. World hunger. Oh god. World hunger. I ate a whole pizza today, so I failed. I didn't eat a whole pizza. I ate half of a pizza. And Kaiser ate the other. <laughs> Kaiser ate my Kaiser, my dog, the German Shepherd. That's his full name. He ate the other. Kaiser, my dog, the, the, Sher- the German Shepherd. The, the, the Sherman Shepherd. The German Shepherd is an honorific, but world hunger. Okay, wait. What's the other ones? And these are uh, these are su- these are problems that other that listeners th- have suggested. These these two were suggested by Dylan. Thank you, Dylan. Thank for you, Dylan. Reaching out. Uh, world hunger. Okay. Or child obesity. Okay. Um, 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 okay. No, I just had a revelation into world hunger. All right. What do we got? We got to buy ugly fruit, Connor. We have to stop wanting to buy beautiful fruit. We need to be okay with buying testicle fruit. And I think that's an important lesson we need to learn. I was actually talking about this with my family over, over the weekend because we were talking about um, there was like fruit stands on the side of the highway and um, that we were driving by. And there was also like a field of like uh, a berry field that you people pay to go and pick their own berries and whatnot, which is super cool. Um, and we we're talking about farmers markets and things like that, which is really, really good and helps exemplify like the, the humanity behind our farming industry and like rural towns and whatnot. And the problem, you know, with our food waste in America is super, super bad in that, like, just with fruits and vegetables, grocery stores, like, throw out more than half of, and I I completely made that up, but they throw out a whole bunch of food because it does not look good um, and because people won't, won't pick it up. And it ends up just being thrown out. And that's so much fruit and vegetables that are wasted. And I'm sure some some grocery store chains donate it and, and things like that. I'm not saying everybody is wasting food all the time. But I do the same thing. If I go to the grocery store and I want some apples, I go through and, and look at how the apples look because I think that's something that I saw my parents doing. And I learned to look for like wormholes and, and stuff like that. I've never once seen an apple with a wormhole in it in a grocery store. So that would, I mean, maybe at this point it's like the Holy grail and I'm just trying to find it. But overall, why do I spend that time looking for some superficial thing whenever it doesn't matter because it's still an apple and it's still going to taste good because it's had to pass whatever regulations exist in the world. And I think that's something we have to get over, you know, and so So, we stop wasting food. Wait, 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 buy ugly fruit, buy ugly. Is this solving world hunger or childhood obesity? This is you solving world hunger. It's solving both, Connor. I didn't realize I was just kind of... That's a curved bullet that just went through both both headshots. It's solving Bo- both. <laughs> if we buy more ugly fruit and feed it to the fat kids, just like I was whenever I was a child, and, and we do that, people are going to... They're going to not be hungry anymore, and they're not going to uh, you know be fat kids. And I think that's important. Also, fat kids should probably run more often, but... But maybe they run to the bad fruit. I don't know. I mean, maybe this is a game or something. I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure Congress has been listening. Yes, we have major congressional listeners. Please, we didn't write any of this down. If you can just put this into some bill, I don't know how to write up a bill, but if you can, if you can just take just bits and pieces. Like if if something sounds like really stupid, don't put it in. But if, but if something like you're you're into. Like, just put it in, like, you know, subsection A, B, or something. Or throw it into, uh, like, one of those, one of those like, budget bills. Like, the, like you, you like to do that. Just throw in some, uh, some little, you make little them, comments. Yeah, you just make them so big. And, you and make them so big and it. sneaky. Just throw it in there. Yeah. Solve, solve the problem. Yeah, so I think we did both. Yeah. I can't believe people don't solve more problems a day. Honestly, it's, really it's, so, it's so easy, Connor. And I think that, I think that we're afraid. We're afraid of how hard it is. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening. Um, sincerely, we've done four of these episodes, and it's it still amazes me how many people are listening. And like I said, especially that Austrian person, I really I want to know who you are. I want to learn more about your culture. Edelweiss, Edelweiss. Also, do you like Arnold Schwarzenegger? Are you Arnold Schwarzenegger? We don't know. We don't. And- we and we might. We may not. But. You know how we can know is go ahead and email us at ck at mwordpod.com. That's, that's right. CK, that's ck at mwordpod.com. Just 
Tell us what uh, what's going on with your life, Mr. Austrian, as well as if you have any world problems that need solving. Go ahead and pop up uh, pop up your 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 suggestion in there. Yeah, um, if, if you have if yeah. you can think of a problem that we need to solve, then please send us an email or or uh, shoot us a tweet. Next week, I want to solve taxes, and so if you have a tax question, I'm basically an expert. So give give us questions about taxes. Because I think that that'll be fun. Because tax day is coming up, Connor. Did you know that? Uh, that's why I'm the expert. See, that's why I'm the expert. I know when they're due. The IRS tells me when they're due. They won't stop telling me when they're due. <laughs> so follow us on Twitter. Uh, our Twitter handle is at mwordpod. Um, you can go to twitter.com/mwordpod. Uh, give us a follow. Give us a few likes up in there. Um, shoot us a, a DM if you like it. And, um, and you can also follow our, our personal accounts on Instagram and, and Twitter. My, my Twitter and Instagram are both, uh, at Kyle the Turner. So you can follow me on Instagram. Kyle, Connor, what is your, what is your Twitter and your Instagram? Uh, Twitter handle is, I don't fucking know because I don't use my I'm Twitter. I'm pretty but sure it's you can, Captain Connor, I think is yours. But you can follow me on Instagram, that boy Connor. That is that and then B-O-Y Connor, C-O-N-N-E-R. Uh, we also want to thank Cindia Martinez for the beautiful oh my gosh. cover art that she made. I am freaking out I am just freaking seeing out. a drawing of my face with other words on the face. The only problem is the fact that you were also on there, but just seeing okay. the drawing, I, it's fantastic. It's so cool. She thank did, you so much, She Cindia. did so good, and um, if you want to... Um, like check out some more. She doesn't like post enough of her art. And I was talking to her the other night about how she's a very talented student um, who is in school for art and, um, and she does not share her art enough on Instagram. And I think she needs to. Um, so go follow her on Instagram. It's with love Cindy. Um, and Cindy is spelled S I N D I. Um, follow her on Instagram and make her post more of her art because she's super talented and as you can tell by the gorgeous cartoon versions of ourselves, which I'm, I've, I'm, I'm having a narcissist reaction to it. I can't stop looking at it. It's like a deep mirror that I keep looking into, and I, I will never eat or drink again, and I'll probably die like that. We also want to thank uh, Grant O'Brien. For no, you can't his... thank Grant. We talked about this. Why? Because it's nepotism. We talked about this in the very first episode. It's too late. Nepotism has occurred. It's still it's being used in every one of our podcasts. <laughs> it's never happened before. I refuse to let you thank Grant O'Brien, his uh, Connor's twin. Thanks, Grant O'Brien, for making juice fluid. For making our, our intro, intro and outro music juice fluid. It is so beautiful, and it gets me pumped and razzed every time. Um, does Grant have something online, like some sort of presence? He needs like a band camp or something, because he's also a very talented musician. Uh, not right now, but I tell you what, as soon as he does, I'll go ahead and post it on here. Connor, we're just surrounded by talented people, and one day, we will be those talented people. One day more. One day more. But not, not one day after today, one day after a few years from now. Oh, jeez. Thanks for listening to... The M Word, a millennial podcast by millennials. It's not about you. Who's to say? And avocado trees, I think. Avocados. Thank you so much for listening. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>